All right, so moving on from the MMA Awards of 2011, this is about the most dominating performance of the year. Uh, my nominees are going to range from upsets to breakthrough performances to hype derailers. So let's see who put on the most dominating performance of 2011. The most dominating performance of 2011, and the nominees are Nam Fan versus Jimmy Hedis, UFC 141. I'm glad I waited until the start of the year to do these awards. After a number of competitive, I'm glad I waited until the start of the year to do these awards. After a number of competitive fights in the UFC, Nam Fan finally got on the main card of a pay-per-view. Unfortunately for Little Saigon Native, he has not been able to capitalize on the wars he's been through because it's been years since he was able to pair wins together. The relatively unknown fighter Jimmy Head has put an ass whooping on the much popular fighter that made people question as to why Nam Fan was a favorite in the first place and where did this kid come from. Mauricio Shogun Hua vs. John Bones Jones, UFC 128 it's uncommon for a challenger of little experience to come in as such a favorite, not only to the betting line, but also in the eyes of the common public, especially against a legend in the fight game like Shogun. And John Jones did not disappoint. While the champ showed as much heart as he could considering the beating that was given to him, eventually Shogun Hua had to succumb to the onslaught of John Jones. Kid Yamamoto vs. Darren Yun Yoyama, UFC Fox 1. Good grief, Kid Yamamoto has had a rough patch of years. Weed scandals in Japan, a knee surgery, losing to the then unknown Joe Warren in Dream, a K1 knockout loss, a divorce to a woman that was a fashion model, losing to the everyday Japanese Joe and Matsunori Kinihara, and winless in the UFC. But the icing on the cake was his loss to Darren Yuen Yoyama at UFC Fox 1. Yuen Yoyama is a guy that has a total of 10 fights spanning over 9 years. There was even a point in the fight where Yuen Yoyama was giving face time to the fans while fighting Yamamoto. Darren controlled the pace of the fight and landed good strikes while on the ground. Kid needs a camp rehaul. Shane Carwin vs. Junior Dos Santos UFC 131 While most of the beatdown in this fight took place in the first round, it truly set the tone for the remaining two. As I said before, Junior Dos Santos has a way of disrupting his opponent's timing and rhythm, something that people don't talk about in MMA, but is critical in the world of boxing, Dos Santos' favorite weapon. Because he can do that, Shane Carwin was unable to confidently release the mass of power in his hands or go for the takedown. Although Carwin walked out of that fight under his own power, his will was broken. In a lot of ways, that's worse than getting finished. Takanori Gomi vs. Nate Diaz, UFC 135. In storytelling, when a character is going to die, the candle always flickers the brightest at the end. But fighting is not a story. Takanori Gomi has been a shell of his former self really ever since Kitayoko subbed him back in some Goku. Yes, Gomi has been embarrassed before, but he's always showed fans why he's called the Fireball Kid, even in losing because of his go for the gusto style. This time, Gomi looked not simply outclassed by Nate Diaz, but scared of him. After the first few landed jabs and straights from Nate Diaz, the younger Diaz brother made his opponent look like he did not want to be in the octagon with him. And the winner for the most dominating performance of 2011 is... John Jones over Shogun Hua, UFC 128. While nowhere near as visceral as Junior Dos Santos' win over Shane Carwin, or as fast-paced as Nick Diaz's win over Takanori Gomi, John Jones was superior in every fast sit that night against Hua. He didn't have to keep it standing, and he didn't have to use kicks, and he didn't have to go to the ground. All in all, he did not have to dictate the fight. Think about that for a moment. A fighter so confident and skilled that it really could have went anywhere in that bout and the outcome would have most likely been the same. Mike Tyson said in his documentary that the scariest fighter is the one who is most relaxed and happy. I have not seen anyone as happy as a relaxed in combat sports in general outside of John Jones and Anderson Silva. 
Okay, so John Jones was my pick for the most dominating performance of 2011. And the thing is that all the fights that I've mentioned just add fuel to the fire of people who don't train and drink beer, you know, in any sports bar or house party watching the different pay-per-views that, you know, take place. And I know that, you know, someone's saying like, yeah, I could have done better. Well, you know, these guys are trained athletes and that could have been you. Alright guys, MMA Awards are going to continue until whenever I run out of categories. Take care.